Hello friends, welcome to Prostoha and it's me Dr. Jolsna. So this is the third session of our smile designing topic. In the previous session we started discussing the various tooth components. We have completed the first four tooth components. So we'll be discussing the remaining tooth components as well as the soft tissue components in this session. Before beginning, I request everyone to please do like, share and subscribe to my channel if you are finding these videos useful. So let us start. The fifth component that we are going to discuss is axial inclination. So what is axial inclination? Actually it is a comparison between the vertical alignment of the maxillary teeth to that of the vertical midline. So as we go from the midline towards the canine, we can see a natural progressive increase in the mesial inclination of each subsequent anterior tooth. So we know the labiolingual inclination that maxillary central incisors are placed or positioned vertically with a slight labial tilt. The lateral incisor, the cervical part is tucked in and the incisal edge is tilted lab slightly labially. And the canine is having a prominent cervical area and the cus tip is having a slight lingual inclination. So this is the labiolingual inclination and if you see from the posteriors starting from the canine you can see that all the teeth are having the same mesial inclination towards the midline as that of the canine. So this will give a natural visual gradation that makes the teeth look smaller as we go posteriorly. So this is about axial inclinations. The next one is interdental contact areas and points. So interdental contact area or interproximal contact area is the broad zone in which two adjacent teeth contacts. So you can see in the first picture that the maxillary central incisor follows the 50 is to 40 is to 30 rule in case of interdental contact area. So the broadest contact is between the two central incisors and the shortest contact is between the lateral and the canine. So this broad zone of interdental contact area will give an illusion of longer teeth to the central incisor. So next is the interdental contact point. So interdental contact point is the most apical point of the interdental contact area. So as you go posteriorly from central towards the canine, you can see that the interdental contact point is moving towards the cervical area of the tooth. So there is a shift of the interdental contact point. Now, as you can see in this picture, the first one is having a much narrow zone of interdental contact area and the second one is having a broad zone. So what happens in narrow zone of interdental contact area is that there is chance of black triangles which give an anesthetic appearance. So this you have to be careful in mind. The next tooth component is incisal embrasures. So as we go from the midline towards the canine, the incisal embrasure should display a natural progressive increase in their size or depth. So as you can see in the picture, starting from midline going posteriorly towards the canine, you can see that the embrasure size is increasing in its width as well as depth. So in central incisor, it is the smallest and the sharpest incisal embrasure. You can see here. And in case of premolars, it is a 90 degree, that is incisal embrasure angle between the two teeth is 90 degree. So providing a incisal embrasure with proper size and depth will look younger in appearance. So in this picture you can see this is an O-age dentition, worn down dentition where incisal embrasure is very small or it is disappearing. So in this case, we have to lengthen the teeth and recreate the incisal embrasure for a much younger appearance. So what happens if we are not providing the proper incisal embrasures? So that will make the teeth appear too uniform as we have already said in an aged dentition or a worn down dentition and it makes the contact area too long and it imparts the dentition a box like appearance. So here incisal embrasures are totally absent and this will give a box like appearance and it's anesthetic. And what happens if we are giving too much deep incisal embrasure? This will make the teeth look much more pointed. So incisal embrasure should be given proper size and width. The next factor is sex, personality and age. So 
As per sex, the maxillary incisors looks round, smooth and delicate in females and it is more cuboidal, hard and vigorous in males. And we have already said that the youthful teeth will have unworn incisal edge, well defined embrasures, high value and low chroma. Now what is value and chroma? Value means it is the darkness or lightness of an object and chroma means it is a saturation of the color of an object. So youthful teeth will have high value and low chroma whereas aged teeth looks shorter with minimal embrasure and will have a low value and high chroma. Now the personality. So the features of maxillary canine gives a personality appearance. When the maxillary canine is having a pointed long fangy cusp, it looks more aggressive and hostile. Whereas if it is soft, blunt, rounded, short cusp, it looks more passive and soft that is a feminine character. So this is about sex, personality and age. The next final one is the symmetry and balance. So what is symmetry? It is a harmonious relationship between the various elements. So there are two types of symmetry. One is static symmetry, example is maxillary central incisor, which are exactly the mirror image of each other. Whereas in dynamic symmetry, that is example uh, is lateral incisor, where two objects look similar, but they are not identical. So this is about symmetry. And what is balance? So balance is seen as we start viewing from the midline going distally, both the right and the left side should look well balanced. So this is about symmetry and balance. Now let us discuss the soft tissue components of smile design. So we know that there should be a harmonious relationship between the various dental proportions as well as the soft tissue components. So the for a proper aesthetic smile, there should be proper balance between these two. That is, there should not be any over dominance of any of these components. So under soft tissue components, we are discussing the four factors that is the gingival health, gingival level and harmony, interdental embrasures and smile line. So the first one is gingival health. So for a proper aesthetic smile, gingival health is of utmost importance. So prior to any treatment, you have to assess the gingival health. And we know that a healthy gingiva will be pale, pink and having a stippled appearance and will show a firm and matte surface. And again, the gingiva will be positioned uh, 5 mm above the intercrustal bone that is interdentally and it will be positioned labially that is 3 mm above the alveolar crustal bone. Again, the interdental embrasures should be filled with a pointed papilla and that fills up to the contact point or else it will create black triangles. Finally, the marginal condor of the gingiva should be sloped coronally to the end and it should have a very thin edge. So these are the ideal gingival health status. Now let us discuss the gingival level and harmony. So under this we will be discussing the gingival height, the gingival shape and the gingival aesthetic line. The cervical gingival height of the centrals should be symmetrical and it can match that of the canines. But the gingival margin of the lateral incisor ideally should be 0.5 to 2 mm below that of the central incisor. So this is the ideal situation where the gingival height of the centrals are symmetrical and can match of that of the canines. But the gingival margin of lateral incisor is 0.5 to 2 mm below the central incisor. Now, this is also acceptable where the gingival height of all the anteriors are at the same level but it is not considered to be an ideal and it is least desirable to have the gingival height of the laterals go beyond that of the centrals and the canines so this looks much more anesthetic so next is the gingival shape so the mandibular incisors and the maxillary lateral incisors are having a symmetrical half oval or half circular shape whereas the maxillary centrals and, and canines are having a much more elliptical gingival shape. So we have already said about the gingival zenith points they are located distally to the long axis in case of maxillary centrals and canines 
and it coincides along the long axis of the maxillary lateral incisors. That is about gingival shape. Next is a gingival aesthetic line. So what is GAL or gingival aesthetic line? It is the line joining the tangents of the zeniths of the free marginal free gingival margin of the central incisors and the canine. So you can see in the picture the line joining the tangents of the zenith. Zenith means it is the most apical point at the gingival margin. So the line that is joining the tangents of the zenith of the free marginal gingiva from the central incisor to the canine. So this is the gingival aesthetic line and it usually makes an angle with the dental midline that is between 45 degree and 90 degree and that is called as the gingival aesthetic line angle. Now there are four classification of the gingival aesthetic line angle based on the uh, appropriate width to length ratio, anatomy, position and alignment of the maxillary anteriors. In class 1 the gingival aesthetic line angle is between 45 to 90 degree and the lateral incisor is either touching the line or it is 1 to 2 mm below the gingival aesthetic line. So this is class 1. Whereas in class 2 the angle is same that is 45 to 90 degree but the lateral incisor is above the gingival aesthetic line that is 1 to 2 millimeter above the GAL and the mesial part of the lateral incisor overlaps the distal aspect of the central incisor. So this is class 2 whereas in class 3 the line angle the gingival aesthetic line angle is 90 degree and the canine lateral and central all lie below the gingival aesthetic line. So this is class 1, class 2 and class 3 and finally class 4 where the gingival condor cannot be assigned to any of the above three classes. It can be either acute or it can be obtuse that is less than 45 or greater than 90 degree. So these are the classification of gingival aesthetic line. So the ideally the gingival aesthetic line should be relatively horizontal to the horizon as well as it should be symmetrical as we are watching from the midline. And also the gingival aesthetic line should be matching on either side of the midline. So there are chances that there are different gingival aesthetic line classification on either side of the midline. So our aim is to make it as much as symmetrical as possible. Next is the interdental embrasure or the cervical embrasure. So we have already discussed about the black triangles. So we know that the gingiva interdentally should be 5 mm above the intercrustal bone whereas labially it should be 3 mm above the alveolar crystal bone. So this interdental embrasure should be filled with the papilla. It should be pointed and reaching up to the embrasure end thus eliminating the appearance of black triangle. So this is about interdental embrasure. Finally the last soft tissue component that is a smile line. Now what is smile line? It is actually an imaginary line along the incisal edges of the maxillary anterior teeth which should mimic the curvature of the superior border of the lower lip during smiling. So the incisal edges of the maxillary teeth that is means this line should mimic the superior border of the lower lip during smiling. So this is the ideal situation that is ideal smile line and here you can see this is a reverse or the inverse smile line where the incisal edges of the central incisor are short of that of the canine. So it is not mimicking the superior border of the lower lip. Now the lip line should not be confused with the smile line. So what is lip line we have already discussed in, in our first session of smile designing topic that is it is the position of the inferior border of the upper lip during the smile. So ideally the lip line and the gingival margin should be congruent or there can be a display of 1 to 2 millimeter of gingiva. But if there is a display of 3 to 4 mm or more of the gingiva, it will result in a gummy smile. And in that case, we have to do cosmetic periodontal recondry in order to get an ideal result. Now let us see the Jan classification of smile line. He classified smile line into three types, high smile line, average smile line and low smile line, depending upon the display of the maxillary anterior teeth and the gingiva. So in high smile line, as you can see in the picture one, the entire 
cervical inside the length of the maxillary anterior teeth is visible and also an adjoining band of gingiva is visible whereas in average smile 75 to 100 percentage of maxillary anterior teeth with the interproximal gingiva that is visible and in case of low smile line it shows less than 75 percentage of the upper anterior teeth and without any display of the gingiva so this is the jan classification of smile line so here comes the end of this uh, current session please do like share among your friends and subscribe my channel if you are finding the videos useful if you have any doubts or any suggestions or any topic that needs to be discussed please do message in the comment section or you can directly mail me at this mail id so thank you all once again we'll see in our next video